Welcome to the Two Minute Anesthesia in Critical Care. Let's discuss the carbon dioxide gap. The CO2 gap is the difference between carbon dioxide within the mixed venous content, CVCO2, compared to the arterial content, CaCO2. This reflects the balance between CO2 production by tissues and elimination by the lungs. It's commonly used as a surrogate mark of cardiac output. A normal gap is less than 6 mm of mercury or 0.8 kilopascals. The content of carbon dioxide is difficult to measure as it exists in multiple forms and therefore we can estimate the gap by assessing the partial pressure of venous and arterial carbon dioxide levels. For completeness, mixed venous samples should be assessed via a pulmonary artery catheter, however this can be technically difficult and therefore is commonly taken by a central venous line. Now let's discuss carbon dioxide physiology. In health, in non-hypoxic conditions, CO2 production is produced during aerobic metabolism and therefore it's related to oxygen consumption and the respiratory quotient, which is between 0.7 and 1, based on substrate. Conversely, during hypoxic conditions, CO2 production can occur during the hydrolysis of ATP and also decarboxylation of strobic sources. CO2 is transported in three forms, bicarbonate, carboamino compounds and the dissolved form. Carboamino compounds are formed by combining carbon dioxide with the terminal amine groups. And finally, CO2 is cleared by ventilation. Notably, the difference in arterial and end tidal CO2 tension is influenced by pulmonary blood flow and also, to a lesser extent, minute ventilation. Now let's discuss the factors affecting the CO2 gap. If we apply CO2 to the fixed equation, CO2 excretion is equal to the product of cardiac output by the difference between the content of venous CO2 minus the arterial content of CO2. For a given VCO2, a decrease in cardiac output results in an increase in PCO2 gap. Let's understand the physiological principles between carbon dioxide and cardiac output. CO2 is produced during aerobic metabolism and it's more soluble than oxygen and therefore rapidly moves out of ischemic tissues into the venous circulation. And therefore, the CO2 gap reflects the ability of blood flow to clear carbon dioxide from the circulation. The importance. So an elevation of the CO2 gap suggests that cardiac output is inadequate for metabolic demands. In the cases of shock, this could suggest a need to increase cardiac output, or non-shock states, this could be due to an increase in oxygen demands. Once again, thank you for listening.